how's everybody doing today? I am your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Tony Scalar, who has been with us many times and is the Senior Vice President of Investor Relations for Ideanomics, I-D-E-X, which is also done extremely well since the last time we talked. How are you doing today, Tony? I love Rich TV. No, I'm doing great. Thank you very much. It's uh, It has been um, exuberant for sure at the same time, but we're only get, getting started. This is just the beginning. I love Ideanomics. I have been telling our entire club that it is one of my top, it's actually my top two electric vehicle plays for 2021. I think it has enormous potential and enormous upside. And our investors that got in when we first started talking about it, really heavily under a dollar, around 88 cents, have already oh, made wow. three, 400%. Now today trading over $4. So it's been hugely, hugely bullish over the last few months since we started to talk about it. And we started to say it was undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. And the revenue growth was exponential. And we talked about that as well, how there's very few companies with your revenue trading under a dollar. And of course it didn't stay under a dollar. Now I have a few questions for you, Tony. Can you tell us a little bit about some of your recent milestones that Ideanomics has hit since the last time we spoke? Oh my goodness gracious, okay. Okay, well, first of all, I think we, there's probably a lot to talk about, but let's just choose a couple of them. And yes. I'm going to focus in on, on, on maybe just the last 30 days because sure. our team worked all throughout the holidays. We worked very hard for shareholders to do uh, a lot of amazing things. And two of those things were really important. One, we closed the Timios transaction, which gives us a cash flow positive generating business that is data rich for our fintech assets. A tremendous amount of data that is built up within the Timios platform to the extent that much of the other industry competitors haven't realized how rich that data is. So we've got some really great things we're going to talk about in 2021. And the second thing I want to talk about, and I think that your viewers will probably really enjoy our recent transaction with Wave and the wireless technologies that are coming to market right now start to help fill out our S to F to C model. And that charging portion Wireless charging will be the infrastructure play. We are very bullish on that. And if you just think about the idea of autonomous driving, if you believe in autonomous driving, lots of POCs out there, lots of different companies that are experimenting in the autonomous driving vehicle ecosystem, how do you charge an autonomous driving vehicle, an autonomous driving bus, an autonomous driving taxi? What's a little arm that's going to come out and, you know, attach on? Maybe, maybe one or two, but not 5,500 buses in a bus depot and not 150 cable trucks. There's going to be breakage and there's going to be problems and there's going to be supply issues. Wireless charging. You roll up, you charge. And that's it. And that is the point about the future of the charging for the EV ecosystem. Wireless charging is a dominant player. And in the ecosystem right now, there aren't a lot of competitors to wave that have the revenues that wave have as of today and the competitive advantage so we're really excited about our wave acquisition and we think that our investment community really believes in that process too so we've got some even more exciting things to be able to talk about in 2021 as it pertains to that technology that's great you guys are doing incredible things what are your main focuses of ideonomics for the first half of 2021, specifically in regards to what you just mentioned, the wave acquisition, and how it plays into your S2F2C business model? Sales to financing to charging. We got to procure the best vehicle for our customers and get them the best financial rate to get those vehicles on the road and then give them the best charging solution so that they can always have that womb to tomb opportunity for their fleets to go out and do the things that they do best to get our vegetables on the road and to get our cable into our homes and to make our American economy continue to be the best in the world. And that's what some of the stimulus and exciting things that are starting to happen now in our ecosystem. And I think 2020. 21 is going to be really exciting for the entire green tech, clean tech industry. A lot of noise out there in the market. We've got a new administration that is coming to the table with all sorts of very exciting opportunities to give the commercial EV sector a big boost. And we're participating in that. I think that there are, I think that our investors are going to be very excited around, um, around earth 
birthday, which is April 22nd, right? We've got some really exciting things that we're gonna, that we're gonna showcase, including maybe some live events. So there's gonna be more opportunity that, uh, that we're gonna give our investors to be able to participate at that level. So I think that that's really exciting. Plus, as uh, Alf said the other day at the Needham conference, thank you very much to our community for a lot of folks that were, that were tuned into that. If you are not knocking on Ideonomics door as an investment bank, if you're not applying to Ideonomics for a job, you're not doing the right thing. We are a growing company. We are making accretive acquisitions and we are building where our competitors are still building internally. They're still playing and tinkering with their toys. They haven't been able to figure out how to get their mass adoption and critical mass into their marketplaces yet. So they might have market caps that are bigger than ours. And I know that we're growing and we're very excited on that. But we're not resting on any of those laurels whatsoever. We are running full steam ahead, much like like our investors want us to. That's great. Now you mentioned a little bit about the acquisition of Timios Holdings Corp. Can you please go through this news with us and what this means for the company? Sure. So Timios, uh, again, on our fintech side, our ideonomics capital side of the house, we were originally, you know, a, a fintech business. We haven't lost our roots in that. And by the purchase of Timios, which is an excellent, um, an excellent company because it's so data rich. Now they're a title insurance company. Now what's Ideonomics doing in the title insurance business? That doesn't make sense. Although that they've got amazing sales, well over ninety plus million dollars that it's added to our top line, and it's kicking off free cash flow, which gives in gives our investors the confidence that they need in a positive manner. Where again, a lot of our competitors aren't going to see that cash flow positive for for a little while. So. So, you know, that is really amazing for our shareholders, but the data that is built up in that is fantastic. So just as a title insurance player, you know, you come to market, you help people close their residential mortgages. And there's some commercial aspect to that. And I think that's what you're going to see in, in 2021. But the Timio system, they have, they have a model that allows you to track that package the whole way through the process and they brought the costs way down. You know, a lot of it had been opaque. You know, I don't know if many of our investors have purchased a piece of the property before. I'm assuming that with a lot of the profits that they made today in GameStop and AMC, please pay off your student loans first and then go out and buy a house. Um, I think that when you go through that Student loans first. When you when you go through that process, it you know it used to be quite opaque, and you would pay large sums of money along the way that you weren't necessarily had the transparency to see where that money was actually going. Tinios reduced that cost all the way down, increased their critical mass, and the data that is in there is phenomenal. If you can imagine a blockchain style solution that tracks the provenance of a title the whole way through its life cycle. Now you're talking about data that has a lot of value to it. So I think that you're going to see a lot more in um, industry information that's going to come to that. And I think that you're going to be very excited about this future conversation about what that data is going to look like. That's great. That sounds super exciting for Ideonomics. Now, Ideonomics Inc. also announced its mobile energy global MEG division sales activities for the last month of December and Q4 2020. Can you break this down for us and let us know what the company's goals are and their projections? Sure. So I don't want to get too much into projections because that's sort of a, a different kind of style of, of questions. And I think that as we um, come to market with our, when we do our um, our earnings calls, that our investors will have the opportunity to speak through some of those questions with our C-suite. So that's really important. But let's just talk about, again, our increase in numbers. We're looking for quarter over quarter growth. The EV industry, no matter what, is going to be lumpy. And you've seen that in the various competitors that we have in the market, you know, and I think that the a recent deal that we had announced with BYD, we had purchased uh, 2000 e-taxis, you know, for ride hailing, a great car that was built by in joint by BYD and, uh, and, and Didi, I think that's what it was. And, you know, they put some, um, they, they put some real thought into some, what that car should have in it as a ride hailing um, industry oriented vehicle. So we bought 2000 of those and we were able to sell 2000 of those and um, we're gonna see more fleet purchasing of that level. And that's our goal for 2021 is to consistently help get these vehicles on the road. Alpha said, and we have said many times in the past, the procurement of the vehicle, the sales portion of our S to F to C model 
That's just the on-ramp. We want to make sure these vehicles are getting into the hands of the commercial users so that we can get to our end goal, which is the charging. That annuitized income is what's going to give value to shareholders for the long haul. And it's very important to get as many vehicles on the road as you can. And as I said, the commercial EV industry has been lumpy. So we're doing our part in the ecosystem to make sure that we're facilitating and enabling the commercial operators to get their right vehicle at the right financed rate. And that's a really important number, right? I don't think a lot of our competitors have figured that portion out yet so that we can get to that charging through a wave, uh, through our wave systems. So that's what we're going to see more of quarter over quarter as it pertains to the MEG sales pipeline. I love your guys' business model. It seems like you guys got your hands in almost everything when it comes to the sector and even- Well, I, I want to say that we're focused though. I think that's really important. We get a lot of inbound. Investors are great. They, they, they email in all the time. Don't stop that, right? Please, we're trying to correspond with as many as we can. So be patient. We're, we're getting there. Ethan is, uh, is, is, also on the, is, is also on the job now. We get a lot of inbound saying, you know, you're doing a lot. Do you have your hands in too many pots? No, not at all. And the reason why is because the sales to financing to charging model. That's the model. I know it sounds very distant right now to some people. And that's because some of our competitors are in their single race lane. And when the market turns, which it will, it always does. These things are cyclical. Ideonomics, we hope it's going to be still standing because we've got a good cash balance sheet. We've got businesses that kick off free cash flow. And we're in an industry that isn't in a single race lane in EV. And if you're one of our competitors, you're like either just building cars and that's it, but you don't try you don't have any of the other solutions. That's going to be an issue for them. And I think that that's going to be one of the key strengths for you guys moving forward because you are very well diversified in the industry. Now, one of the things that you're focused on is there was some news that Ideonomics is coming out with EV trucks for the freight industry. Can you give us some insight on that? Okay, well, maybe there was some confusion between the national, um, the, the freight industry. A great organization that we're very happy to be a sponsor of. It's really important for us to be involved in the community. And when we were out in the field doing our customer discovery at truck stops, Liam, Keith, and a few of our team members asking questions, it's really important to have that on the ground interface. So being part of NAPTI is very important. Companies need to be part of an ecosystem that is just growing up. There's a lot of information that's needed. A lot of the players have a lot of questions. They don't necessarily understand the difference between a hydrogen fuel cell and an EV battery of different sizes too. What does it mean when it's um, uh, replaceable? How is it swappable? Can I just pick it up? How heavy is it? They need to be able to touch and feel these things. And they need to have companies like Ideonomics who have access to global OEMs, including our own Tree Electric in Malaysia, where we're kicking off you know, two and three wheelers and moving into the four-wheel market they want to hear from industry folks to find out what are the issues what are the problems what how does an operator in that side of the world deal with this particular problem and we have that insight so we were really excited to be able to um, join NAPTI as a sponsor and get into the market and really help that education process and run pilots and get the information in white papers out there and do the studies with the other co-op petitions in the marketplace to make sure that the ecosystem is moving forward because that's what drives sales that that's what drives the sales at the end of the day when everybody's um on the getting the boat rowing in the right direction then that's what gives everybody the sales and that's really the end goal get these vehicles on the market so that we can sell them the energy and that's the energy sh shift that the climate change initiatives internationally are trying to achieve you're mentioning a couple of things that I'm very bullish on electric vehicles and blockchain technology. Put it together, you got a company that is very futuristic, a company that millennials can really sink their teeth into because they understand the blockchain. Maybe people that are baby boomers and older maybe don't understand blockchain technology as much. Maybe they're not investing as much in blockchain right now, but the millennials get it because they're trading and using Bitcoin. They understand Ethereum. You know, they're, they're, they're buying and selling with brokers in, 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 in different places all over the world and flipping different Bitcoin and, and, and using Bitcoin and blockchain technology to send money uh, to people that are bankable and unbankable all over the world. This is the future. And you guys have recognized that. You guys have. I, I want to I wanna interject by 
by by saying I think it is absolutely fantastic that there is a generation that really appreciates and adopts the technology. There's a there there you know your viewers know very well. There's a difference between cryptocurrencies and tokens and blockchain. Yes. So if you could imagine the idea of a blockchain solution that follows a title closing. It gives assurance and de-risks for a lot of the players along the way because they have a proof. And those mechanisms outside of the cryptocurrencies, and it's great that the that the the marketplace in the in the generation that you're speaking to really understands the technology and is adopting it. But much like the cell phone industry, do you remember when it first came to market and there wasn't ubiquity and a cell phone from Europe wouldn't work in North America and a North American cell phone wouldn't work in Asia and everybody's kind of running off all like wild, wild, wild. Pew, 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 pew until there was a sense of ubiquity. And that adoption is what really helped bring that industry of what we use today to trade on our cell phones, to move money in and out of different accounts. It's, it's a technology that grew up because it had adoption at the right time. That's what we're going to see in those blockchain mechanisms, right? Different technologies that, you know, some of them aren't going to make it. Some of them are why ideonomics doesn't like to be asset heavy. It's why we don't like to invest in in R&D. We like to purchase the things that are working with the licenses that have provenance. And so it, I can appreciate the idea that you have a generation that is really believing in a technology that is going to change the way banking works and identification works. And that does play into EV, whether you're selling an EV vehicle and you need to title transfer it or whether you need to fuel up at a wave wireless stop where you're there and then be able to communicate and get those payments facilitated in an easy manner. Blockchain is really going to help continue to revolutionize an industry on smart cities across the world. And that is also going to help with climate change. I agree 100%. Now, if there was one thing that you would want shareholders, investors, anyone that's new learning about Ideonomics today for the first time to know about the company, this is our first interview for 2021, what would it be? Great question. So Ideonomics is in the commercial enablement EV space. Very important. I want them to understand our sales to finance the charging model. I want them to know that we are a young company, that this industry is still very speculative, that there is going to be a lot of change and to always do two things. One, consult your investment advisor before making any investment decision. And two, we want you to be happy with us. And more importantly, we want you to be a long-term investor with us. If you buy a few thousand shares and you put it into your speculative portion of your portfolio and you toss it away for 18 months, we think that you're going to be very, very happy at the end of that period. We are working very hard to change the way this industry has been focused in the past in a new industry where the co-opetition is a little bit behind us. So Look at the balance sheets that are that make up the the from the acquisitions of Timios, right? That's going to be really important. That gives a really good base of free cash flow that's being kick, kicked off. Understand what wave in um, wireless charging is about, and understand what the rest of the players in the ecosystem are doing. And I think that you'll be very happy with the moves that Ideonomics are making. We want to remind everyone that, and you mentioned this, that Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence and do your research before you invest in everything we talk about here. Now, chances are when you speak to your financial advisor, they're going to say, oh, wow, Ideonomics, that's a great pick. We do a lot of due diligence ourselves. We do a lot of research ourselves. This is why we like to do these interviews. And we feel like it gives us the opportunity to ask the tough questions and get really great answers. You've done a great job today, Tony, explaining everything to us so we have a better idea of what's going on with IDEX, IDEonomics in 2021 and beyond. If there was anything that you want to let anyone know as far as how they can get in touch with you, how they can reach you for an investor, a joint venture partner, a potential another company ah, that wants to get in contact. There we go. What's the best way? I want to, I want to, I want to say this. I want to thank our investors. I want to thank our investment community. Many of you email in with other potential partnerships, acquisition targets, other um, introductions. Please don't stop. Keep it coming. We're a small company. We're growing. We're 
hiring on a daily basis. We're going to do tremendous things in 2021, but we really rely on our investors to be our eyes and ears out there. When you see something that's wrong, you let us know. You read our filings, you go to our website, you make sure that we have the proper information on there. If you don't see something, you email in at ir at idenomics.com. We've got a new VP of marketing. You're going to see a lot more information on each one of the products. We didn't even get a chance to talk about my favorite select track and Steve Heckeroth and what that whole team is doing in the electro tractor market. But I think you'll see some more of that coming up quite soon. Um, I want you to reach out to us. You follow us on social media. You follow Alf. You make sure that you're talking to your investment advisor. And we're relying on you guys to get out there and really help us not only spread the word, but give us that feedback. Find us those right companies that we should be accretively purchasing. Find us to make us what you think is going to be one of the most premier companies in the EV industry. I love it. Tony Sklar, the Senior Vice President of Investor Relations for IDenomics. Symbol is IDEX on the NASDAQ. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. If you like this video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. Tony, thank you for joining us once again. It's always a pleasure. And for those of you that are watching, thank you for joining us. Have a great day. IDEX on your watch list, put it on your radar. I think it's going to be a huge winner in 2021 and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. We'll talk to you guys soon.